Well, hello guys. Welcome back to this year's Elevator Parts Tour. And we're going to do something a little bit different today. Last year, I've had all most of my parts in this closet. Although, something has uh, drastically changed. And you'll see once we get to the other part of the video. So, we're going to do two parts to this video. Um, the first part will be here at the house. And the next clip you'll see with everything else will be over at my apartment. Reason being, I moved most of the parts out of this closet up into my apartment, and you'll see most of them up there. So, without further ado, let's get started. As always, we're going to start with this thing. This is my Dover Traditional um, Pyramid Shaped Air Lantern. I actually bought this from uh, Rafe, aka Grayish Valley, for a really good price. So, huge thanks for him for salvaging this thing and selling it for a pretty good price. But anyway, as far as I can remember, this was from the Marriott River Rock in San Antonio, Texas, if that was correct. And uh, it's been a while since I've kind of known that fact. But anyway, this is just the, has the whole box, has the, uh, cover it has the pyramid shaped lanterns which i really like unfortunately there is somewhere because this was from my garage if i remember correctly but anyway i have put some leds into this um, box and i actually just replaced the batteries because they were dead and there turns on i defaulted to some christmas colors because well it's the holiday season why not but usually i default it to uh just uh do a do a loop of colors sometimes it gets out of sync but i mean it's it's a nice little setting but anyway we'll go ahead and turn this off and we'll move to the next part my next part is the schiller 3300 air lantern and floor indicator combo although this is not your typical lantern and stuff. This is the California version of the 3300 lantern. It has the floor indicator in the middle. There was a circuit board on the back which operates the whole thing, but I've since took it off because I have no reason for it. And like the traditional lantern right there, I've uh, attached some LEDs to it. <laughs> a very wet neck way, but it works. And I like the traditional lantern, I replaced the battery so it works again, and it defaults to Christmas colors. But obviously, I can change it if how I like. But we're gonna leave it as is. But this looks pretty nice. It's nice to have a California Fiend fixture in North Carolina <laughs> in this room. But anyways, we'll look at the last few parts, and we'll, then we'll move on. All right, we'll cover the last few parts in this closet because we moved them out of the way for the time being and these two were sitting in a drawer so I brought them out. Anyway, here is my Dover car top station. This is a very old one. As you can see it's got three switches. It's got this little light switch here. It's got the big chunky switch right here. It's always fun to mess with. Then we got this toggle switch right here. And then we got these really, really satisfying buttons to push. Like these are super satisfying to push. And on top of it is a little Biltmore uh, knickknack I got back in 2014. And right next to it is probably the most I've spent on a part, but damn it if it wasn't worth it. This is my Otis Bakelite black button call panel. You definitely can tell this came off of a manual. The buttons are weird. This one likes to get stiff. This one is just very loose because there's a little piece missing out of the button. And there's the Otis Glow. It's in really nice shape. And it is complete. As you can see the back side there. Which is really nice. But probably my favorite part I have. And right next to it is this Cutler Hammer Call Station. Another really satisfying button to push. I've never seen Cutler Hammer out in the field, but maybe one day I will. But this is really satisfying. And the this call station itself looks very unique. Like I've never seen anything like that. You can tell if it came off a really old elevator. And that concludes here. But hey, 
we got another place to cover, so stay tuned. We'll cover that right now. Well, here's the other place we got to cover, so let's begin. It's basically kind of the miscellaneous stuff that I don't really know what to do with right now, but right now they just sit on this table. To the left, you got a Tissenkrupp lantern, although really this is from Dover originally, but this is from the Tissenkrupp era. It's a traditional lantern, and uh, it's actually one of the few Dover things that survive even to this day, so it's pretty nice, although pretty basic at, at the same time. It's more common in the Tissenkrupp area than Dover's, but anyway. Right next to it, we got a interesting innovation lantern. This is a single one, and it's got this weird shape to it, which is very nice. And then you got all this accent and stuff around it, and it's pretty unique. It's actually old innovation, as you'll see. It's got the old innovation logo from the 90s. It's upside down, but it's so I can uh, balance it like this. And then kind of slants a little bit, but I hope to uh, get that fixed and get both of these on the uh, wireless LEDs, but for now, they just kind of sit here and do nothing, but they're pretty interesting, uh, but I just kind of need a better place for them instead of <laughs> this table. You guys probably seen this countless times, but this is my armor floor indicator. It's got the arrows, it's got B, 1, and 2. And you guys seen this around if you watch a few of my live streams. I actually spoiled this part earlier in the year. But right now, it just kind of sits here. But I would like to get it to light up one day. At my desk now, we got this Montgomery Lantern. And you can definitely tell it's uh, pretty old. Probably from like the 60s or so. Maybe even 70s. But uh, this is a pretty rare lantern. And uh, there's actually a ton of these sold on eBay, and I got like two of these for cheap. The other one sits in my closet right now, and I'll probably give that away to someone else. But for now, it just kind of sits there, and this one sits out. But like the other lanterns, it doesn't light up right now, but probably by the time this video is published, it probably lights up now. But it's a pretty cool part. This part right here is actually one of the very few parts I actually did um, get from a mod. Mods don't really happen that common in Western North Carolina. And even if I do try, it's usually too late. And I was very close to not getting any parts from this mod. But we got a U.S. Circle floor indicator. And as we all know, U.S. used their actual buttons for the indicator so you can basically push them. But they don't have uh, contacts or anything. Instead, you get this uh, horrible squeaking noise. That's totally not ear piercing at all. But this floor indicator actually came from the inside of the elevator of the Union Square office building in downtown Hickory, which has been broken down for almost two years now. <laughs> or close around to that point. I mean, this came from a very shitty elevator that was not good at all when I remember back in 2020 but this actually came off of a uh, Westbrook elevator from the 60s and US did a mod in 1981 they used circle buttons and this was a part of the elevator this was unfortunately the only thing I could say but it's better than nothing right now it just kind of sits here but one day I'll like to get it clean and maybe wired up when I actually know how to wire things that is before we get to the main display, I actually got a few parts on this uh, nightstand. We got an Otis Series 1 call station with the fire service key. Unfortunately, I do not have the key for this currently, but one day I eventually will. But you can definitely tell this is the newer style button they've used since 1993. Alright, next to it is an Otis Black button. It's actually a most like a P part. It's got the guts and everything, just does not have the actual box. But it's got a bracket, it's mounted too, and it's really nice to press. Really nice to press, although it does not like to stay up in this position that good. And here's that Otis phone that I still don't know why I even bought to this day. But it's an interesting part. It's new old stock, so I guess I can't complain too much. And now, we finally come to the main display. And we got a lot of cover, so let's start from the top and work our way down.
Starting off, this was actually the first part I ever got back in 21. This is an Impulse Air Lantern. As you can see, it's the newer stuff. It's got the circuit boards and everything. But I would like to get this wired up one day. Right next to it is an intermediate impulse call panel with the fire service key. I thought I bought the key separate. And then some firefighter fire operations controls. Right next to it is, is a terminal impulse call panel with this weird ass switch. It's a little finicky though, I gotta be careful. But it turns to two positions, off and delivery. I honestly don't understand what the point of this is, but it's interesting to say the least. Right next to it is traditionally boring. This is the late 70s to late 80s style traditional with the uh, flimsy and cheap buttons. Although the bases themselves are pretty durable, the buttons themselves, not so much. And right in front is just a part of an impulse CO piece, just the floor buttons. But it's an interesting piece to have. And yeah, top shelf is basically a Dover shelf. Why wouldn't we have one? <laughs> Down here we got a uh, variety of fixtures. Let's start with this really awesome CJ Anderson car panel. I'm guessing this came off of a manual and it's from Rosenberg Elevators. So, I believe this came out of Wisconsin somewhere. Because so I think Rosenberg is uh, originated from that area, if I recall correctly. But I'm not an expert. But it's got the uh, HS style buttons. And they are really loud. I don't know if you can hear that, but you can hear the inner workings of this pretty loudly. Right here, we basically got like a mini Westinghouse display. There's just an empty space for something, but right now we got a Westinghouse Type A. Not my favorite button in the world. It kind of gives me traditionally boring vibes, but this definitely feels very, very sturdy. The press. And it's got what I like to call the Lego board. And that's how everything is mounted. I would like to wire this up, but for now it just kind of sits here. Right next to it is Westinghouse RT, or as we all know, it's just Adam Survivors. At least the call buttons are. This call station is definitely a lot more worn than I remember it, but oh well. Right next to this is probably one of the biggest regrets purchases I've ever bought. This is an Adam Survivor Plus call station, and as you remember in the last video, it was covered and protective material and it took almost an hour and 30 minutes to get all that crap off but all I just need to do now is just to wire it. Here's an Epco SSL H button that practically everyone has because there's like a, f a million of these sold on eBay. And we got an Innovation Universal button from an Eyeline station. This is actually another part I bought from Rafe. So he thanks to him. He told me it was a totally not a pain in the ass to pack. But you can definitely tell this is innovation because of the, the base and you can hear the, the clickiness of it. Looking at it at first, you might think this is Montgomery conventional, which um is a thing. Montgomery used innovation buttons like universal or um security for their fixture line, but they just had different bases, so they kind of feel more mushy. But this is definitely innovation. And I'll show you the eyeline uh, panel itself. And here's the eyeline station itself. You can see why I downsized it to just this. Because it's pretty freaking huge. But you can see, this is where the uh, call station would have gone. There's the uh, old innovation logo from the 90s. And some other stuff. He got the in case fire sign up here. I could technically take this out and just display it somewhere around here, but I think that would be a pain to get back together. And it's also kind of a little worn. I just noticed that, but yeah, you can see why I downsized it to just that right there. So pretty interesting though. So that is the main display. 
But there is a few more things I do got to cover. So let's get to them. This right here is the only CLP I have, but it's better than none. It's an Edge Series 1 CLP. You can definitely tell it's a little bit more newer. As you can see, there's the digital floor indicator. The green screen has been taken up because it's pretty unsightly. Mirrors the Otis logo with the capacity. Call cancel button, which is pretty worn out and scratched into. Some key switches and indicators like the fire hat. Some tape there. Three floors, B1 and two. Door open, door close, the alarm button. These buttons right here are a little bit more clicky. Some more key switches. I would like to acquire the keys for this so I can do a more in-depth showing of this panel, but for right now, this is what we got. Maybe I'll do a video of this eventually, but for now, we're gonna hold, hold off on that for now. And this is all I'm gonna show. Right here is a gigantic cluster of an Otis black button call panel with the rotor dial. As you can see, um, it's got the arrow right there, and this is the newer version of the black button. It's got the uh, the Lexan design on that. There's the contacts and the rotor dial itself. It's got a search three floors. So G, one, two, and you know, it'll scroll up and down depending on what floor it's on. Right now, it's just this giant mess because there is, <laughs> I don't have anything to put this in. This is uh, an incomplete piece and uh, I don't really know what to do with it, so it just sits in my closet for now until I do a project on this, which will probably take a while, but it's a cool piece to have and I paid uh, Paid very cheap for this, so I can't complain too much. But putting this together will probably be, be the hardest part. But for now, this is what we got, and it's pretty cool, even though it's a gigantic mess. The last thing I want to show off is something I actually wanted to show off in the original parts tour, but I kind of forgot about it. But I want to show off my elevator hats. Now, back in 2021, I just had these two hats right here. I got just a basic Kone hat. And we got a uh, blue Tizenkrupp hat. You guys might have seen these in a few videos. Though they will start appearing more and more in my later videos. Right here's my Otis hat. And it's uh, got this weird protrusion which I don't like. But it's, uh, it's a pretty neat hat. And right here's probably my favorite hat. It's got this Dover hat. It's got this uh, um, American flag theme here. Like 4th of July I guess. It's got Baltimore CSI 98 and then there's the Dover Elevators logo. It's probably my favorite hat of the bunch and I've actually been wearing this a lot when I'm filming a bunch of elevators like Dover Impulses which I've seen a lot of as of recent. So you'll be seeing that more popping up in future videos. Hopefully i would like to start wearing these hats again but for now this is all the hats I got and I hope to get more next year anyways guys thank you for watching my newest elevated parts tour i hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you next year